Acting President, this past year, as ever, we've seen the state of the rule of law in Hong Kong to be at the center of attention across the international community. The Edward Snowden incident drew the international spotlight once again on Hong Kong, on one country, two systems, and on our legal system. It served as, as a reminder and an important opportunity for all of us to once again reassert and proclaim the fundamental state of the rule of law in Hong Kong. The Edward Snowden episode highlights the importance of the rule of law in the maintenance of our image as an international city, the independence of our legal system, the manifestation of fairness and integrity, as ingrained in the core values of the Hong Kong people. Our legal system requires resources in order to function and operate effectively. And like any organization, it requires not only resources and funding, but also planning. By that, I mean planning on all levels of the judiciary, from the magistrate courts to the court of final appeal, from addressing judges' workload to the need for more support for judges and the need for 21st century court facilities. This year, the Chief Justice, in his opening of the legal year speech, reminded us all of the importance of this aspect. And I quote, by any standards, our judiciary is a relatively small one, given the volume and complexity of cases with which we deal. The establishment figure for our judges and judicial officers is 193. Any consideration of an increase in the number of judges, of course, also involves an examination of associated aspects. For example, if there were to be an increase in numbers for the judiciary, there must be an adequate number of courtrooms and space to cope with any such expansion. There are naturally other logistical aspects which need to be considered as well. In July last year, I corresponded with the Chief Executive in relation to the question of more space for the judiciary and the need for adequate resources. Underlying this correspondence was the fact that until thought had been given to these matters, not only would any plans for expansion be limited, but even the existing demands on the judiciary would be under pressure. This is a quote from the Chief Justice speech from the opening of the legal year this year. The Chief Justice then went on to say that it is recognized by the Chief Executive and Executive Authorities that an efficient and an independent judiciary is cardinal to the rule of law, that the Executive Authorities ought to render all necessary support to promote the effective, efficient and fair administration of justice in Hong Kong. Yet disappointingly, in this year's policy address, there wasn't even one word, not even one word on how the executive branch of government intends to work with the judiciary in the furtherance of its plans for expansion and to cope with the ever-increasing workload and demands faced by the judiciary. This is disappointing, to say the least. There's not even one word offered in the entire policy address on plans to expand legal aid, nor how to address the independence or the perceived lack of independence of our legal aid department either by creating an independent legal aid department or by some other arrangement which will shield the legal aid department's operations from the rest of the government machine. These measures to provide for more legal aid, especially to the middle classes, are essential to the state of the rule of law in Hong Kong. For ensuring access to justice is essential and our legal system shall not and cannot be limited to the rich and privileged classes. On legal aid, again, not even one word from the Chief Executive. We welcome the initiatives on the part of the administration to convert the existing Court of Final Appeal building into an international legal hub. It is hoped that legal, international legal institutions, such as the London Court of International Arbitration or the Stockholm Chamber of Commerce, well known for its arbitration capabilities, should be invited to set up offices in Hong Kong in order to further boost our reputation as the leading dispute resolution center in the region and not to lose any further ground to Singapore. 
More funding needs to be given to local institutions such as the Hong Kong Interna International Arbitration Center for the promotion of Hong Kong's arbitration services to the international community. Such policy initiatives will no doubt, I hope, receive the full support from members of the AJLS panel. Now, there's been talk about expanding our arbitration services to Qinghai and other places in mainland. May I remind this House that our strength as the legal profession and our strength as a dispute resolution center lies at home right here in Hong Kong. If our arbitration services are done well, are promoted well, our arbitration services would take root or continue to expand in Hong Kong. And we should look to Hong Kong as the first and foremost dispute resolution center in the region. Acting President, the recent arrest and conviction of mainland lawyer He Ziwing once again remind us all of the backwardness of the legal system in the mainland and the preciousness of our very own. As a member of the legal profession, our hearts go out to He Ziwing and his family. Such brutal suppression of members of the legal community and the blatant disregard of the rule of law are precisely why one does not have faith in the civic progress of our nation. More importantly, the case of Hui Ziwing reminds us that our present cause here is to protect and treasure the rule of law here in Hong Kong, for we are the impetus for change. And when the moment of change arrives, what we have in Hong Kong shall shine in the rest of our nation. And this is the very task set upon us. I know that there are many who believe that the time is gone for one can appeal to those high and honest impulses that were once the mainstay and the element of our character. Yet I believe it is a noble thing to have the opportunity to guide the development of the rule of law in our nation and to influence the destinies of the civic development and the legal system in the rest of the nation. Yet ever if there was an object of honorable ambition more than ever must it be so at the moment of which I'm speaking. The case of Hui Ziwing is a warning call for us all that this is an hour when the very foundation of the rule of law is under threat from those who disagree with its basic premise. They are the enemies of the rule of law, and I put it no less. They are the enemies of the rule of law and represent the powerful force that threatens what we hold most, most dear. They are the soulless men who believe in nothing except the brutality of power alone without constitutional restraint. They are those who conspire with these men, those who would not hesitate to push the rule of law or the rule by law aside at the first sight of its posing an obstacle to those in power, those who would use whatever means necessary to help these men achieve their political ends. Acting President, for the rule of law is not and should never be a servant of politics or the powerful, lest it be confused with an inferior cousin, rule by law. Whereas even the most authoritarian regimes would know, would know how to rule by law and to use the law as a means of oppression, the rule of law dictates that every piece of legislation, every policy, every election, every act of public government should adhere to the basic principles of justice and the basic principles of fairness, such that everyone should be equal before the law. By that very same measure, a consultation as important as one for constitutional reform should be carried out with a view to listen and to consult rather than to look for ways to screen out opinions or to use false legal argument to disguise what is ultimately a political question. Whether the threat to the rule of law in Hong Kong is real or imagined, as some would try to argue, we must nevertheless safeguard it with all our might and with all our strength. For history shall blame us for our false sense of complacency should we allow the rule of law to fade, to slip away, leaving its foundations broken and unrepaired whilst un under our watch. Acting President, as I have said last year on the same occasion, I contemplate the progress of the rule of law in this nation will be slow and painful. 
but I look forward to it with perfect composure and confidence. For establishing the rule of law for our nation begins with upholding our constitutional arrangement here, right here at home, by means, and by means of an independent judiciary and from a conviction of its benefit that will accrue the great body of the people in this nation. Thank you, Acting.